You're listening to Beyond the Measure, episode 14. Listen as I, a young choir director, and my husband, a young composer, interview other music educators in order to gain insight into their own success in the classroom. We have a lot to learn, and we want you to learn with us. No matter your age, ensemble, or experience, this is the ideal podcast for music educators, composers, and students alike. So join us as we go Beyond the Measure. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, this is Kara and my co-host. Christian. Um, today we have a special guest, uh, another special guest. Uh, her name is Lindsay Ransford, and she is the choir director at uh, Craig Middle School. And I had the pleasure of student teaching under her, and I learned a lot. Um, I was really thrown in there, which was like the best thing that could have <laughs> happened. Uh, middle schoolers, I, I just, it was a very eye-opening experience and I, and I learned a lot. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that time there. <laughs> We're glad that you are on the podcast with us. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Okay. So could you just start by uh, kind of telling us how did you come to do music and become a choir director and everything and oh goodness yeah. oh <laughs> well it probably you know I started singing very young age um, my mom would probably tell you that you know in church services everybody be singing and I would probably be sitting underneath the pew and you could hear my voice everywhere. <laughs> um, and so people started asking for me to sing, you know, a special every once in a while. And my brothers and I would sing and then eventually came piano lessons, band and choir by junior high. Um, so music's always been a huge part of my life. Uh, my brother's a, older brother is a musician. My mother was a music major and a music teacher. So it's just kind of always been there. Um, when I went to college, like everybody, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> um, but my mother, as wise as she is, said, maybe you should look into education mm -hmm. just in case that <laughs> performance major doesn't come through. <laughs> and... Um, and so I did, and sure enough, you know, I just kind of went through the motions, but by about my senior year, I was helping a friend of mine set up her first classroom, and it was in a small town, you know, it was old, a lot of, um, it had been a couple of years since they had even had a music program, and my wills just started, sp you know, turning, mm. and going, oh, you could do this, you could do that, and then came student teaching, and that's where my eyes were really opened. Um, my student taught with Christy Carey Miller in the Putnam City School District in Oklahoma City, um, where she was teaching at the time. And I just, there were things I just went, oh, I didn't know that you had to actually teach children <laughs> how to match pitch mm -hmm. in sync, because that was natural. Yeah. Um, but I just fell in love with education the whole course of education. And um, I taught elementary music for about nine years. Um, and I loved every minute of it. During that time, I did my Kodai levels at OU. And that's when um, choir kind of came back in. Mm. Uh, I'd always had a fifth or a fourth and fifth grade choir at my elementary schools and um, my, my education in college, I never felt like truly prepared me for what, you know, mm -hmm. to actually teach mm -hmm. and my student teaching in the secondary level was kind of the same. It didn't really prepare me. I had no idea. So mm -hmm. I never felt comfortable with it, but I felt the calling Yeah. and doing my levels and doing, um, the chorus track that we had to do and introducing a piece how to teach literature um it just all started to come hand in hand and then after I finished the year after I finished my level three um an opening at our feeder school middle school had opened and I just knew that was it it was time it was time to move up go back to choir 
um, and the rest is history. I've just finished my seventh year in middle school choir and haven't looked back. And now here you are on the podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's been all leading up to this. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, can you go like into like your like the Kodai stuff and like how does that um, play a role like in your teaching? Oh man, I tell you, uh, that was so eye opening for me because it was. There were things I went, okay, yeah, I did that. I do that. I do that. And then there were things were going, oh, that's how it should be done. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And just the learning about sequential learning, sequential teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there were times teaching at the elementary level. It was like in first grade, I knew my students needed to learn. So me and law. In second grade, I knew I needed to introduce dough. But there were just other things mm-hmm. to it um prepping the ear and getting it into their mind into their body and having them just hearing it and feeling it before you introduce a concept and you know and that comes into play even in the choral world because we're teaching them these different intervals we're teaching them how to read music but they need to learn how to hear it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know when you're playing an instrument or you're playing the piano it's fingering and you just kind of go oh well i push this and then i go to this i might have to change my embouchure just a little bit Mm -hmm. if i'm on you know on a horn but overall you know you just see it and you just do it where in singing it's a muscle movement Yeah. yeah Um, And you have to be able to hear it and know what that needs to sound like. And so there's a big difference. Um, So that was a huge part for me. And just also, you know, with that came different techniques of how to introduce music. You know, sometimes we always thought, well, we just bang it out on the piano. Well, most kids aren't natural, don't have a natural ear. They Mm -hmm. have to be taught. And that goes back. They need to hear it from the voice. They need to learn to hear it for themselves and sing it for themselves. And they do that by, you know, sixth grade. Beginning sixth grade for me, we do a lot of folk music and use songs. You know, if I'm starting with Do, Re, Mi, I'm going to use songs that have Do, Re, Mi. And we're going to sing it and we're going to sing it and sing a couple different songs. And then we're going to practice hearing those different pitches. Is it high, medium, low? Mm-hmm. Can you show me on your body? Can you um, echo it for me? And then I finally show them what it looks like on the music. And so whenever they see it, then in their actual literature, it's a lot easier to recognize and to know what it should sound like when they see it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then as they're practicing one concept, you start prepping for the next concept. And so um, even I went to a workshop just a couple of weeks ago at OU, um, and it was a Kodai workshop. And, you know, she was talking about transitions in the choral classroom and just picking out little parts from the song you're about to go into, but practicing you know, little things, you know, intervals, so that they're, again, you're prepping their ear, you're prepping them for it before they actually start doing it. So Mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier for them. So that was really big for me. Um, And just being able to break it down too for the students, because again, not everybody, you you get those rare kids who are just naturally talented and can hear it, see it and get it. So, you know, and it just taught me how to break that down, how to build it up. And so it was pretty big for me. And I, you know, I always just encourage everyone. Hey, (laughs) there's these levels. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's a secondary track. There's an elementary track. Go for either. (laughs) Now, I'm not super familiar with Kodai and and well, let me ask from my perspective, but also a lot of other people that maybe weren't in the education side of things, you know, like for me, I majored in composition. I mean, I heard you care talk about Kodai and mm-hmm. Suzuki. Orf, and a couple, yeah. yeah, Orf. So like just 
just for anyone that might be listening, any of our younger listeners, mm-hmm. would y'all mind kind of explaining, you don't have to go super specific, but just kind of like for anyone that's like starting to hear these names and everything and they're like, what's that? Like, what what are those and, and what's the kind of the difference? Or I don't know if you know the differences specifically, but. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I kind of know the difference really only between like ORF and Kodai a little bit, mm-hmm. but. You're you're more specialized <laughs> and certified in code eyes, so you go that. ahead. <laughs> um, well, they're different techniques, mm-hmm. and you know, there's also just there's a ton of research, which yeah. is what you know. You can't go wrong doing any of them. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's important to you know, with the or if you're adding more instru- instruments, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know, it's seeing play. Um, uh, it's been a few years. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't wanna, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I think but it's more, yeah, like movements and a lot of movement, yeah. which Kodai is as well. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, I feel like the best teachers out there are the ones who do a little bit of it all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you know, I am of course as a vocalist, I'm very strong and passionate about singing. You know, it's your first, your voice is your first natural instrument. Every yeah. child deserves a chance to learn how to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can throw in instruments to help connect the dots for, you know, if you're learning certain concepts or keeping a steady beat, I think that's really important as well. Um, and you'll see that there are a lot of things that intertwine mm-hmm. between all of them. But um, but the sequential learning, you're going to find more in the Kodai. Gotcha. I mean, from just my experience. Gotcha. So, um, so basically, it's like each of these different methods are are basically kind of like the outline of how you go about teaching these different skills. Over is that correct? And music education yeah. in general, mm-hmm. and just to give the child a full learning experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. To kind of still talking about the Kodai. Um, with like the sequential learning, like we have like deadlines and choir concerts that we have to prepare for, yes. um, that, that we can't really spend a whole bunch of time. Like we have to teach music on top of those like really important skills that they have to learn. So those beginning sixth graders, um, would you like kind of explain like how, um, you teach maybe like for the first, like teach a song for like the first concert? Do you do like a lot of um, like rote singing, um, we do a lot of I rote. Kind of struggled with. We do a lot of rote with sixth grade at the beginning mm-hmm. of the school year, and also things you have to consider is how, going back to that sequential learning, what type of music you're introducing to them at the first of the school year. Yeah. And when I'm looking for music for my sixth graders at the first of the year, you know, most of these kids, some of them come from really strong programs. Some of them have had a new music teacher every year since yeah. kindergarten. Um, you know, there's there are different levels, so you kind of have to treat them as complete beginners. Um, when I'm – my first six weeks of the school year typically involve, you know, of course, introducing good singing, um, healthy singing tone, working on um, – of course, your procedures, your routines. But I also, with that good singing, comes in that folk music. So I might use it as part of their warm-up. And, you know, I'll add motions in that, you know, that show, that um, high, medium, low, um, high, low, things like that. I'm, you know, finding any way. I might use it in the transition and decide, you know what, between this activity and or this song and that song, I'm going to do a quick song um, for my transition. And I just teach, teach it by rote. And again, it's just getting it in their ear. Mm-hmm, and kids, mm-hmm. I mean, whether you're teaching for 40 minutes or 60 minutes, I mean, there's so much you can cover. Mm-hmm. And with your rehearsal time, you know, there's only so much those kids can handle anyhow, especially yeah. at the first of the school year. Um, so that it's good to have those brain breaks and just changing up. Okay, so we're going to start off with, you know, these warm-ups, and we might go into a folk song. Then I might spend five minutes on this piece of literature. 
then I might go to this. And then I'm going to go to this other piece of literature, which usually for the first concert, my sixth graders are learning two songs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the first song might be a unison piece, and the second one might be a partner song. Mm -hmm. You know, something. And then as we're introducing, like, do, re, mi, if I can, I'm try to also find those patterns in their literature that they're singing. So again, they're making those connections that, okay, we just started learning do, re, mi, and F. Now this song is in G, so we just got to move it up, you know, mm -hmm. a step to uh, the line. Instead of a space do, we have, now it's on a line. Um, and, but look at this pattern. Yeah. Do you see a do, re, mi? Do you see a mi, re, do? Can you find those for me? You know, what measure is this one at? Just to help them make those connections. Mm -hmm. um, but there are always, you know, and then we will practice reading it. Or we might mm -hmm. do a little four measure practice of reading Do Re Mi and then move on to the next activity. So it's all about your planning, 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 mm -hmm. planning. <laughs> yeah. Does it ever feel like when you're doing those things, and it, like it's a lot of things, but it's a lot of, I mean, little but important things, yes. which really make some big things. But does it ever feel like, you know, especially when working with like the sixth graders and the young ones, does it does it ever feel like, oh, man, we're just slowly just dragging along trying to get there? Or does it do you kind of feel like there's OK, there's there's progress like you're constantly. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depends I've had group. <laughs> I've had groups who came in and I was like, whoa, we are flying. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And then. I will say this last year was hard, um, yeah. but I, you know, there were things we had to keep in mind when these students were in, um, in fifth grade, they were wearing masks and then most of those kids didn't sing mm -hmm. at yeah. all. Yep. They didn't sing in fourth grade. They weren't in school for an entire year. You know, mm -hmm. they lost an entire quarter of their school year. So they weren't singing for that. Then they, you know, and they weren't getting anything. They didn't. I mean, there was still teaching, but it just wasn't the mm -hmm. same happening in fifth grade. And then, voila, welcome to sixth grade choir. Um, it moved a little bit slower for us last year. Mm. Yeah. And I just had to, you know, I had to be patient. I had to keep those things in mind of what they were going through. And, you know, I found my stronger kids and made sure that they were kind of spread out. Um, because you learn pretty quick who your strong kids are, um, who your readers are, who your singers are. And, you know, we just made the most of it. And by the end of the year, we weren't quite where um, my choirs would be by the end of sixth grade. Mm -hmm. But we made it where we needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that was important. And making sure, because I'd rather them get the basics and be able to do that really well yeah then you know oh well my kids can part you know sight read in two part and mm -hmm. three part by the end of no mm -hmm. I, I will be super happy if we can do this yeah. really well so it's a good foundation to get them ready for seventh grade yeah do you think that we'll ever that's not the right way to say it so so like let's say like this past class for instance like you were just saying they spent at least two maybe even three years barely even singing at all and so i mean that's you know that many so you know it feels like they're they're behind at, you know at least i mean i like to think of it it's like it's almost like a whole year year even more more's yeah. worth of you know singing and practice and growth that could have happened but didn't mm -hmm. um, for the most part and so like that's obviously going to affect them all the way down the line yeah. um, all the way up through high school but like do you think it's do y'all think it's going to be like they're just always going to be stuck there until they graduate or do you think it's going to be possible to kind of try to accelerate their growth like in the later years i think they'll get there mm -hmm. you know kids are pretty resilient yeah, yeah um and i think you know it comes back to consistency mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it comes to you know I mean, parent li home life is one of the number one things. If they have yeah. parents who are encouraging and 
want them to be successful and are willing to do what they need to do to help them be successful, they're going to get there. They're going to catch up. It's not going to be a big deal. It's the kids who don't have that at home, I think, who are going to struggle. They, you know, they were the kids who were going to struggle in anyway unfortunately um and i think that's where we as teachers have to continue to just we have to continue to keep the standard but we have to also remember we might need to take a step Mm -hmm. back yeah and just help them a little bit more Mm -hmm. and that's okay because you know they'll they'll get there if they want to get there Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that was something i was I was I put a lot of pressure on myself last year um, just to like have like really, really good, knowledgeable groups. And they're very smart kids. Um, But I was like really worried about UIL since a lot like the seventh and grade girls that I took had never been. And I was like, well, this is going to be interesting. Um, But I mean, I didn't get the scores that I per se like, you know, we didn't get sweepstakes or anything, but they did the best that they could with the experience that they had or lack thereof experience. And I'm really pleased with how they did. And well, it's about the growth. Yeah. You know, they, they where were we lot. in August and mm-hmm. look at where we are now. Yeah. Could you have done this in August? Yeah. And they would have been like, oh, my gosh, no. Would you mm-hmm. have sounded like this in August? Mm-hmm. No, we did not sound like that in August. It's all about where were we and where are we now yeah and, and that was seeing that growth yeah that, and that was like the best thing was like showing them or listening to those recordings afterwards yes. and they like they were like that's that's us that's we yeah. sound like that I was like yes yes you did sound like that mm. and you should be completely proud of yourself but yeah, yeah it's definitely about like the progress and growth more than like i don't want to say success that's not the right word but achievement achievement but even that's an achievement yeah. in itself. It's yeah, it's kind of hard to like basic. I don't yeah, know. Just Quality to say it the right way. Quantity. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I remember, like my, I think it was my my senior year of high school, which was only my second year of choir, and uh, I, I just have a specific memory of me and and one of my best friends. We were sitting in his car, listening to the recordings of at UIL, and 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 we were just. You know, such choir nerds sitting in our car in the car and like with the full blast our <laughs> choir music and it's like, oh wow, he sounds so good. Well, oh, I think I could hear that low E. I <laughs> probably not. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah. Let us take a quick break, real quick, so I can tell you a little bit about this podcast's primary sponsor, which is Christian Fortner Music. That's right, my own music business. This is the primary platform that I use to sell my music, and you can uh, find it at www.christianfortner, that's F O R T N E R, music.com. Now, you may be thinking, oh, I don't know, this guy is a young composer. Does he really know what he's doing? Well, (laughs) to be honest, none of us composers really know what we're doing if if we're being completely honest with ourselves. But if you want to kind of get an idea of what my music might be like and if it might be a good fit for your ensemble, you can actually uh, get a free copy of music from me. That's right, a free piece of music. This isn't just a study score. This is a full score and parts that you can use for your ensemble to perform completely for free. And you can do that by signing up for my mailing list. So if you go to my website, Christian Fortner, that's F-O-R-T-N-E-R, music.com slash mailings, you can sign up for my mailing list right there and you'll get a link in your inbox where you can select a piece of music for either choir, string orchestra, or a band. And I should also mention that the choir piece, it can be either an SAB, SA, or TB version. So uh, for any of you out there that are looking for SAB, SA, TB, specific voicings like that, then this might be a good opportunity for you. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Again, if that's something you'd be interested in, just check it out on my website. And now we can get back to the episode. So with middle school, a lot of things that you have to do is like classroom management and Mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. So something I kind of struggled with was like how to deal with those misbehaviors in like a a good way. Um, So I, I wanted to know, like, how do you deal with those those kids? Like, do you want me to give you like a specific situation? 
I, have, oh, I could think of several. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, it, relationships is mm-hmm. number one. Um, you have to build relationships with the kids. Um, you know, whether they've come from a really rough home life or even the kids who, you know, They've got it made pretty well. They've got parents who love them, that encourage them, but sometimes they're just mm-hmm. not nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it does, it takes, it takes relationships. It takes boundaries, like realizing this is not okay. You know, uh, I mean, boys are, middle school boys are like the perfect example mm-hmm. here. I, I, you know, I love middle school boys. They're probably some of my favorite classes, mm-hmm. even though they drain everything out of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, and I, I always have great boys in my groups, you know, sometimes I have some hard ones, but even some of the good ones, they just, they walk in and they just, they're everywhere. They're on the walls. They're on each other. They're, I mean, literally everywhere. And you're having to peel them off. And <laughs> they need structure. They need a high structure. Um, they need boundaries. And they need to know, okay, it's okay that we joke about this. But whenever it's time to sing, it's time to sing. Or you've crossed a line, sir. And they need to know when they cross that line. Um, and that it's not acceptable. And nine out of ten times I get, yes, ma'am. They, you know, and their heads go down a little bit and then they straighten up mm-hmm. and we can make it maybe five more minutes before I need to yep. <laughs> <laughs> redirect again. <Do> again. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be consistent about it. Um, they need that. They want that. Even your meanest girls class that you may have, you know, I've had administrators come in and go, oh my, this is, wow. You have all of them together in the mm-hmm. same room. And when I'm there, it's not an issue. If there's a sub, God help us all. Yes. <laughs> um, that's when the admins get called, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because, you know, the person they have the relationship with mm-hmm. is not there. And I've had, I've had kids who would just, if you called them out in front of class, they were going to blow up at mm-hmm. you and it was not going to be pretty. And I've had, you know, I've had to teach have student teachers come in and tell them this child might say something to you that's inappropriate you need to find her after class and talk to her about it because if you say anything to give any attention to her in front of the class it will be 10 times worse Mm. and you will lose her but she will respect you if you come to her because she will respect that instead of embarrassing her Mm. Um, because she needs to know that you are safe because school is her safe place. Mm. Um, you know, and I've, through all the years, I've had so many, so many kids and, you know, and there's going to be years where once you've, you know, when you're first getting started in a building, kids are going to try and test you to figure out what can I get away with this teacher? You know, that teacher's gone. I bet I can get away with it now. Or, um, you know, and it takes time to build those relationships. You know, this will be my sixth year at Craig. And it's kind of gotten to the point where if you're a seventh and eighth grader, you know who Mrs. Ransford is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you know, if you're going to be in choir, you kind of know that you're going to have to sing. Mm -hmm. Um, You're going to have to follow her rules. (laughs) Yep. And you can't just get away with it. Otherwise, they they get out pretty fast um, mm-hmm. if they, you know, are looking for a quote unquote blow off class. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's kids who join and they they have no idea what they're getting into, but because of those relationships, they feel safe and they want to stay and they want to be a part of it. So does that kind of help? Yeah, yeah. So it you know, relationships, consistency. Um, and, um, oh, the word just lost me. (laughs) That happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. (laughs) strong boundaries Mm -hmm. because middle schoolers need strong. (laughs) Yeah. I think the main issue that I had was not like individual misbehavior, but it's like 
everybody is collectively talking at oh, once. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter how many times I do like a call and response or like tell them be quiet. It's like two minutes later they're talking again, and I I don't know how to. I guess with my groups last year, I just didn't it, I didn't find a good way to just have some a moment of peace <laughs> with know, my middle school. Groups. It's funny because the you know the choir kids are always the ones who talk the most mm-hmm. imagine that <laughs> 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 who would have thought <laughs> i mean um no and you know that's a that's an ongoing everybody has that issue yeah every you know i know some amazing directors and a high school director i can think of one right now um from oklahoma and he, i can remember just times he's like they talk all the time they won't stop talking and I mean, he has an excellent program. Mm-hmm. He's been teaching for a long time. He's a wonderful director. And those are times you go, okay, it's not just me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it comes back to what are our what are our expectations? Sometimes I have to put short, you know, small goals for my students. Like, okay, if we can get through from point A to point B without interruptions, um, smooth transitions, yeah. without me having to stop you from talking then we will do this for 30 seconds or for a minute. Mm. Or on Fridays, we'll do um, game day slash, you know, that's your secretive, um, like, assessment day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're games. Um, still learning, always. But uh, because sometimes they need that. I've done pom-pom wars, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, you know, pom-pom jars where the kids could earn pom-poms. If we can get through this transition without talking, okay, there's a pom-pom. If we can get through this, in, you know, the next 10 minutes of this rehearsal without you interrupting every time I stop, then we'll do this. Um, but it's also, what, what is our goal? What are we doing here? If I stop you, what does that mean? And they'll always tell you mm-hmm. what exactly they're supposed to be doing. They know. They're, they're not dumb. They're very, very smart. Um, it's just they're looking at you going, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And sometimes it's like, okay, so let's go call. Shall we go call? Yeah. Let's go make some phone calls. And I've done that before in the middle of class. Mm-hmm. Let's just stop right now in a line, shall we? <laughs> yeah. A lot of what you're saying reminds me of the way I feel with our new puppy that we had the past oh couple months on how she behaves. It's like she knows what she's supposed to do. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I actually have a question kind of going off of those sort of behavioral things. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about, okay, we're not singing. When we're not singing, we won't stop talking, right? Well, what about the flip side? Whenever, do you ever run into... Okay, now it's time to sing. And they won't. And you're not singing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've had how, that too. how do you deal with that? Because <laughs> I feel like I've seen, you know, multiple. We're in those choir Facebook groups. I think I've seen multiple yeah. people saying, what do they I do? They won't sing. They, they won't sing no matter I what I try. I think, again, it comes down to safe space. Yeah. And I've had that. I, I mean, I've had a group of girls recently who all had extreme gifts, beautiful voices, and it was like mm-hmm. <sighs> coming out of yeah. them, just air. Yeah. Air. <laughs> I, um, think, I think Wendy Weeks called it like a hair dryer choir. Yeah, the hair dryer <laughs> choir. <So funny. laughs> yes. And you just have to kind of, you know, so, and it was when I knew if my students can't sing for me, even, you know, whether there's 10, 20, 50, mm-hmm. um, Sometimes that's just a lack of, I don't feel safe. Yeah. I feel like I'm being judged. Mm -hmm. And they do. And I've had, I've had girls tell me this. I feel like I'm being judged. I feel like everyone's looking at me. Mm -hmm. I feel, because we're all about the feels in middle school. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, So it's just, sometimes we'll go around and have, uh, say positive things Hmm. about each other. Um, circle time. Can you tell me something? What is something, you know, you can say about your neighbor or, you know, someone across the room can't be your best friend, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. (laughs) Um, sometimes they just need to hear 
that was really good. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite times of year is solo contest season. Yes. Because, you know, as choir directors, especially if you're by yourself, like most of us are, um, we don't get to just listen to our kids one-on-one. And it's rare for me to pull my kids because of that fear factor uh-huh. one-on-one. Um, boys, I do it all the time because boys don't care. Yeah. <laughs> They'll sing for anybody. Um, they don't care. But girls, it's just a whole nother ball yeah. game. But solo contests, I uh, last year, the last few years, I've made all of my varsity kids audition. That's good. Mm-hmm. And last year I made, um, this past year I did all my seventh and eighth grade girls. I made them do mm. the solo contest. And before contest, I listened to everybody sing. And just by doing that made a huge Mm. difference in my kids because they had been working with uh, my accompanist who had been working with them on their solos. And I just sat there. I said, okay, pretend I'm the judge. Introduce yourself. Sing your song. Look at the wall. You do not need to look at me. That is okay. I I wouldn't look at them just Mm. so they did, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just to help them out. And then I got to, you know, just give them wonderful feedback. And they need that. And I wish I could do it more often. It's really hard to do that. But they need to hear that, oh, my gosh, where has this been? That Mm -hmm. was amazing. Yeah. Um, And then they go, oh. Because I had girls who were going to quit choir. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it was like, okay, well, well, maybe I'll stay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Maybe I can do this. (laughs) Maybe I can do this. Maybe I'm not like, okay, she says I'm really good. Mm -hmm. And she's not just saying it in front of everybody. You know, that one-on-one. So I think sometimes if there's a way, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But I think it's helpful for them to hear that from us. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. And I wonder, I feel like that's also, we've talked about this on a couple other episodes too, the importance of, you know, you yourself as the teacher still performing when you can and, letting your students see that Mm -hmm. and so that you know you're i mean you're also showing them like yeah hey you can you can go out and you can do this (laughs) well and it's okay to you know i share with my students all the time i was like i would never at your age volunteer to sing the solo by myself yeah yeah Yeah. you know going (laughs) you know that i started singing at church when i was four by myself I cried every single time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> before I had to go sing Just because be I was so scared. Mm-hmm. And once I started singing, it was fine, but it took a long time doing it once or twice. Didn't fix that mm-hmm. fear. You know, I had mm-hmm. to learn how to work with that fear and, you know, for kids to realize, Oh, she's not perfect because they do look yeah. at us and they think, Oh, well you, you've been yeah. doing this forever because mm-hmm. you're so mm-hmm. old, you know? <laughs> 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 and it's like, no, you know, Once upon a time, I was you. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that you're scared. It's okay that you feel like this because I have been there too. And sometimes even now as an adult, when it's been a long time since I've sung or performed, I get those jitters still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And Mm -hmm. But I know how to work through them now. Mm So Yeah. And like, I I feel like with most of those students that do solo contests, um, they come out afterwards and they're like, oh, that wasn't even bad. I'm yeah. going to do it again next mm-hmm. year. And that's yeah. not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, a majority sure. of yeah. them just go, oh, okay, that wasn't bad. Yeah. And a yeah. few still say, that was scary. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard Eric Whitaker say a few times that um, people have asked him if he, you know, d- does he ever get nervous going out to like conduct for, you know, concerts and stuff. And he said, oh, yeah, I... I always get nervous. You just get really used to being yeah. nervous. <laughs> right. <laughs> really comfortable with being yes. nervous. <laughs> oh yeah. So we were kind of, we're kind of been talking about like safety and building, um, a safe environment, um, with our students and in our classroom. And something I noticed whenever I student taught with you, um, it was like a really fun atmosphere. And, um, I just wanted to know, like, what are some of the ways that you keep like the fun even like just like with teaching just music literacy that can sometimes not be fun to learn for students yes (laughs) um even in college (laughs) so i can't imagine what it's like (laughs) yeah you know i um i have lots of facial expressions (laughs) (laughs) 
And, you know, that was hard with the mask because the kids uh-huh. could not read my face. And that was a struggle. And there were times I just had to take off my mask and like, OK, yeah. look at my face real fast. Um, you have to keep it light. And there's times where it's like, OK, for the next sometimes I have to prep them, you know, especially like uh, when we're prepping for UIL sight reading. Oh, my goodness. You cannot talk. Yes. You cannot. You know. <laughs> sometimes you have to get that mean face on. And sometimes, you know, it's like you're a cheerleader. Your mom. You're a teacher. You're, um, you wear a lot of hats as a teacher. You, you know, there are things it's like, okay, if you're not excited about this, why should they be? Mm-hmm. And I tease, you know, I'll joke, oh, I love sight reading, and I get, which I do, I mean, I do, yeah. <laughs> I could do it for hours, mm-hmm. come on, let's go, and I tell them that, and they just look at me like I'm crazy, yeah. <laughs> and I laugh it off, and I keep moving, and I just, I have to keep it going, and there are mornings I wake up, and I'm not feeling it, you know, um, there are days I'm saying, I tell the kids, this is a three-day, cu- this is a three-cup day, which means three cups of coffee. <laughs> and they usually know that's pretty, yeah. <laughs> it's been a rough morning. But as soon as I'm in front of them, it's like a switch mm-hmm. where the energy has got to come up. Yeah. Um, I need them to see that I love doing my job, that I am glad that they are in my classroom. And every teacher has a different aesthetic about them. There are those who are super calm, super quiet, there are those who are extremely loud and crazy. And then there's some of us who are just a little bit of it all, mm-hmm. a little bit of scary, a little bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. It's all in the stew. <laughs> um, you know, and when kids want to test those boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then there's times it's like, okay, we need to have a sit down talk. And, but it all comes back to, I tell my students, I'm here for you. You know, I get up every morning to teach you. I get up every day to, you know, help you be a better human. And I'm passionate about that. I'm excited Mm -hmm. about that. Um, Did I want to wake up today? Not really. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sleep in. I wanted to sit at home and drink my coffee. (laughs) Um, But I'm here with you. And I'm okay with that. Um, And for, you know... Classroom, culture, and environment is really important Mm -hmm. to me. Um, Knowing my kids, knowing their names, knowing what they're interested in so I can, you know, find things to relate to them. And whenever I need to make some type of example or something, I can relate choir to sports. I can relate choir to everything. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, teamwork. Um because it takes a team and they need somebody to lead them but they need somebody who's you know passionate about that and about them so and I think it's just finding what works for you what works for you know your personality because it needs to be authentic um you know I've gone to workshops and they've done all these cool dances and I'm like (laughs) I mean I love to dance (laughs) but that would look that's just not me. It just and there's pass. some things yeah. I can yeah. do and be comfortable with. And then there's some things I'm like, that is not me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I cannot pull that off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, you are super cool. That is amazing. Yeah. If I did that, my kids would, you know, probably call the police on me thinking <laughs> I was taking something I shouldn't be taking because that's just not <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> or they, you know, they look at me funny and be like, miss, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Um, yeah, I think uh, there was one session at Team EA. Um, it was about that tenor bass one. Yeah, and he had so many awesome things. Yeah, like with the choir aerobics. Yes, I was like, first of all, I would look ridiculous doing that, <laughs> and like I know my students currently. And they would think it was stupid. But I would look great. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have just made a video of you doing it. Yeah. Well, that's they when you, you, that. you get the students to kind of yeah. learn it and lead it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, eventually you'll get a student teacher. I had a student teacher a couple years <laughs> nice. back and he did it. He did bro yeah. and I was like, yes. 
yes, yeah. I've always wanted to do this, mm-hmm. but I look really ridiculous. <laughs> um, but you are amazing, and you just taught my boys that, and now yes. they want to do it, and mm-hmm. they can lead it. You know, and it's finding things. There are some things um, you got to find things culturally to relate to them, mm-hmm. but it's still got to be you. Yeah, right. genuine. Genuine. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've got kids who would just look at me and be like, Miss, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah. I had one, I had a boy um, at my last school. He goes, So, and I made this recording for, you know, like a solo for them to learn for Pops concert. And, you know, I just put it on my page for them to learn it. Nothing fancy. She's like, He goes, Miss. My dad said, you need to learn to sing with soul. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, but I'm so glad you can. Um, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I know my voice. I know what I can sing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's why you're auditioning for the solo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And hey, not me. <laughs> you can use that as an opportunity to make them feel even more special and, right. and, you know, unique. <laughs> yeah. So whenever you're looking in your library for music, um, like what qualities are you looking for when you're picking music? Oh, goodness. <laughs> qualities. Uh, there are many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you have to look for range. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the musicality of it. Uh, the accompaniment's got to be good. The uh, literature, the actual text. Mm-hmm. needs mm-hmm. to be good i am um, i made a mistake one year and i picked the song and i liked the accompaniment i loved the melody and the harmony with it i didn't look at the text mm. and by the time i taught it all to my girls on sofa and it was time for text i look at it and i went and i read it and i went this is no we can't do this song mm. just because it was it was poorly written Mm-hmm. It just, it was super corny. <laughs> yeah. And I went, you were not going to sing this song. This is not, wow. if you were a fifth grade choir, sure. Maybe sixth mm-hmm. grade. It was my seventh and eighth grade girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it, it just wasn't, it wasn't appropriate for them. It mm-hmm. wasn't bad. It was just not. Just like, yeah. it was just a little immature for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, You know, I look at range. You know, if I'm looking for my tenor bass choir, you know, range is limited for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, for my quote unquote tenors, you know, <laughs> singing anything below a G is really hard for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they struggle. And sometimes even a G is hard for them. So there, are, you know, and depends on the time of year. Yeah. So those are things I have to really pay attention to. If I'm picking music for, There are things melodically I have to pay attention to um, just depending on the modes and how it's written. Is it supported in the accompaniment? Mm -hmm. Um, My concert girls may be fine without that, but my intermediate girls would not be okay with that. They need to have that support because they're not their musician, you know, Mm -hmm. as a musician yet. Um, so there are lots of things. It takes a lot of time for me to pick out music. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, you know songs and after four years of not singing it, you're like, oh, it's time to pull this song back out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know exactly, you know, you or yeah. you have a certain group, you know, what I have is not working. I need something else. I need something more like this song. So, um, and it takes time to build that and to learn there are certain composers, you know, if I see their name, I'm like, okay, I kind of want to look mm-hmm. at that. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you have to be careful because you find yourself using the same composers over and over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, you, in which there's other great composers out there as well. So you have to really just, there's so much great music. You just have to broaden your horizons. Yeah. I like, um, having different genres i don't want to use all newly Mm -hmm. composed music i want some i want to introduce my students to several different genres as much as i can um so uh you know i might try to do some type of irish song or 
uh, you know, an African song or a Spanish song, you know, just Mm -hmm. try to keep it open and then also, but you also have to do the research on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. have to understand what, what, what was this written for? Why was it written? Who was it written by? And teaching the students that, you know, if I'm doing a spiritual, I need to do my research on it. Mm -hmm. And my students need to understand why, you know, the meaning behind the text. Yeah. Um, We did some pieces the last couple of years, actually. Um, We've done a few pieces that's had Langston Hughes text in it. Mm. And I had uh, my concert girls this last year. I had them do research do research it had to it was mixed Langston Hughes text and mixed with a spiritual and um, I believe it was by Rollo Dilworth and I had my girls sign up and do different research projects on it and had to present it you know so that they understood what they were singing about mm-hmm. like this isn't just some song mm-hmm. yeah there is meaning powerful meaning here and I need you to understand the context of what this came from that is not just some song mm-hmm. that we're singing about mm-hmm. um, so that they can start grasping that. Yeah. Because I think that's important. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a lot that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that, that actually kind of answers my, my question that I was going to ask was because just from a composer standpoint, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, what what can I do to – you know, what, what, what's something that I can write that's going to jump out at you or, or not, you know, yeah. turn you away. And, and that's, yeah, that's really helpful. I, I think I had, I don't know if it was me or someone else in a Facebook group, but someone had asked to, you know, about that kind of question, you know, like what kind of, um, yeah, I think it was me. I, I asked like, what kind of music do you look for or do you not want, you know, and for your ensemble? And, and I think I was asking about choir specifically, but I, I always remember like there was one comment that said, we don't want any more boys music that's talking about railroads and cowboys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot of that. There is. And it's, you know, middle school boys music is very limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, even in my library, I, at school, I mean, my tenor bass section is the smallest. Mm -hmm. I've got a huge corner of SSA. I've got a decent two part, not, quite where I want it yet but a good two-part you know library but my tenor base is just really small yeah um and finding things that are more ttb tb Mm -hmm. um it's hard and then finding it within their range and it's either cowboys uh railroads or it's a love song Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know my boys would always tease and but you know it's funny it's always their favorite one um (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's because they always love the harmonies and everything how it's it's written and they love doing the pretty stuff Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they won't ever admit it but they love it they (laughs) sound amazing on it Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's hard yeah so you composers out there keep writing for us <laughs> yes oh yeah i i wrote my first piece that was you know intentionally for I, i'll say middle school but slash young i think young developing high school choirs. yeah developing choirs mm-hmm. and and it was i mean it was a bit of a challenge to to try to do what i could to try to fit as check as many of those boxes as i could but yeah. at the same time it was actually really fun <laughs> you know like thinking just trying to go into the mind of you know, well, when I was this age, what would I have liked to see? Right. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. If anyone's interested, go to my website, ChristianFortnerMusic.com. <laughs> Shameless plug. I'm not sponsored at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that kind of leads in the last question I had was, um, what composers do you gravitate towards that mm-hmm. have like that kind of check all the boxes for you? Oh goodness. Okay, <laughs> let's see if I can remember them all. <laughs> okay, Laura Farnell mm-hmm. is always wonderful um uh, amy burnin uh there is um johnson victor johnson Mm -hmm. oh yeah always writes great stuff Mm -hmm. um christy carey miller um rollo dilworth there's so many Mm -hmm. um and now i'm drawing a blank um i should have brought (laughs) Oh, I need a list. Was, okay, David Beery, I think, yeah. is one. 
Um, there's uh, oh, there's always Patterson, Mark Patterson, mm-hmm. um, Erlene Rents. Mm-hmm. I hope I said her name correctly. I think that's right. Um, <laughs> Ruth Schramm. Does Marilyn Lightfoot do? Marilyn mm-hmm. Lightfoot. Yeah. Um, oh, there's some. Yeah, I would have had to write a list down. Yeah. For <laughs> you. Hey, no, that's a good. That's a good list already. And oh. I, I actually remember there was one other question. Um, and if you don't, if you can't think of it at the top of your head, that that's fine. Uh, what are like songs, like pieces that you just like pull out? ever so often like because it's just so good like it's very teachable to any group or just recent songs you've done even yeah. just once that you really liked that you think oh Gosh. people should know I about know, this i should have <laughs> if i had thought about it earlier yeah sorry not to put you on the spot oh, yeah. goodness oh there's, my gosh well, where's my computer <laughs> <laughs> um i love banjo sam by um oh you see i've already went blank <laughs> um it is great for sixth grade. I love to do it early spring. It's all pentatones. Mm. So um, very teachable. There is Nick's pa- Nick Page's um, Ferris Lady is always okay. just beautiful and wonderful for young beginning choirs. Um, is, it, is the banjo, Sam, is it Jay Broker? <laughs> Jay Broker, yes. That's it. I found it. <laughs> um, oh, Shannon Doe by Farnell. It's a beautiful two-part mm. essay. Um, yeah, I need my list. <laughs> oh, that's no, okay. That's hey, okay. you got three good ones. I got at three, least three good ones. Yeah. I think that's yeah, something. I have a huge list. I kind of have like, these are my go-to yeah. so every once in a while. And I, mm-hmm. you know, and I try to venture out. And every time something new, you know. Which is the great thing about going to like TCDA this week is Mm -hmm. like what's new, what's coming out, what is, or even reading sessions of tried and true. Sometimes somebody will bring something up. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that piece. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Um, So there's always lots of people. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. I feel like that's something we need to ask. We're going to try to start asking every guest from here on out is. Just give us three pieces you think everyone should know about. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe like each level, like sixth grade, seventh grade girls, seventh yeah. grade boys. Yes. That kind of be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. Cool. Well, let it be said. That's, that's what we're going to do. And y'all can listen to the next few episodes and see if we actually remember to do <laughs> that. <laughs> so, yeah. cool. Well, I think that's all I've got. Okay. Do you have any more questions? I don't think so. Not that I can think of. Um, I might, if I'm ever working on any new music for that kind of age group, I might send it your way so you can do. take a peek at it. I actually do have one that I'm close to, well, I say close to finishing, but I'm going back and like kind of editing it now. So I might, I might send you something here there pretty soon. <laughs> I would love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, yeah. Thanks for being on the show with us. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. This was fun. I've never done this before. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. (laughs) Thanks for being here. (laughs) Yeah.